millions of dollars. And uh, she was looking to create business. She was wanting to buy a city, um, a, a, a town. I, I, that's one of my dreams. So she could have sped up my future that quickly. And uh, so her husband actually brought her to meet me. Okay. Um, yeah. So he, he I'm, I'm not bisexual. So if I would have went into this poly type relationship, I would have still had my own place. She would have been still staying with him and I would have still had another wife myself or, or maybe more. I don't know what I've been doing if I had did that that way. But that was that was something I was considering. And people may say, well, that sounds crazy that you'd be with a woman who already has a man. Um, many of us men already do that. Uh, what your man got to do with me? I got a man. I'm not trying to hear yeah. that. Stuff, right. We, we OK. As long as we're up front. We're all right with that. OK, now um, somebody said, what if the women want to be with another man? If they wanted that initially, then we could have we could have talked about that. But you, uh, uh, substantiate your dynamic. That's what it is. So I, I wanted to make sure this right here, Kevin, what type of life do you want? Well, I wanted to be, I wanted to have my two Queens. I wanted to, I want to have my Queens. I want to have my relationship with my Queens and that's it. Right now. It sounds selfish. If you're telling those Queens, they can't do something that they want to do. So what I said is let me just make sure that they don't want to do it. So I asked them if they want another King, if they want another man, no, they do not. So their desire is only to be with me. And they both fully know this, know that they're with me and they're okay with that. Now, if they told me that they wanted another king, I would have to be fair. And I would have to understand that. And we would have to decide what we're going to do with our relationship with, with, with going forward. But, and I wouldn't be angry with them if that was the case. Even if they said, this is too hard for me, I don't want to do it. We know that the one thing that's constant in life is change. People change. And you never really know, you know, what tomorrow holds. So just my motto is just love me, love me like there's no tomorrow. And if tomorrow comes, repeat. That's all because we don't we ever cherish every moment because all this five years from now, what that may look like, man, you may not even have tomorrow. Yeah, you, you, you might not know. How does the United States government look at this? And how does the United States government treat you? So um, technically, I have one wife. Uh, uh, when you're talking about legalities from, from a standpoint of that, but you can... Uh, create your own documentation that is the equivalent to marriage paperwork. And, th and that's what I have with I said, hear that. I said, you can create your own legal, legal contracts to where they can have the same type of power um, as the wife does. So you don't have to go through a judicial system to marry, so to speak. And this is one of the things that um, when, I, when me, me and Jamie had first separated, I told myself I'd never get married again anyway. And this, for the simple fact is I understand government marriage. I know that there's a reason for it and a purpose for it in terms of litigation and, and control and, and owning things and having, I say so if your husband's on his deathbed or wife's on a deathbed, I understand the reasons for all of that. But I also understand that it also dictates a relationship. If people want out, they have to go through all these different things. I looked at it like this. If, if I love you and you love me, let's just be together. Let's just rock together. Because if we was on a deserted island, None of us would be looking for anybody to marry us, man. We, we are in a program world and we acting like pits. We don't believe anybody's love can be substantiated unless somebody signed a piece of paper. What is paper? Man? People, people don't even be loving each other and still be, got that piece of paper. It means nothing. It means nothing to me. Um, but when it comes to um, um, solidifying yourself contractually, that, that marriage paperwork does do that. And so that's why people still value that paperwork. But there are ways to do it without having the government all up in your stuff, too. Okay, um, hold on, let me just see, uh, right, let's see here, uh, let's see here, hold on, let me just see, are there any, how do you handle arguments between the two women? I actually, they have never argued. They've never, they've never had an argument. How do you keep peace in the house, sir, with two well, women? Right, well, the, the thing about us is we all, um, emotionally intelligent. Again, if you have an emotion, it doesn't mean that you have a right to act on that emotion. Go inside. And we don't mind sitting together and talking about this stuff. As you can see, I'm very, I'm very well spoken. If you ever meet my queens, they're the same way. Lace is a life coach. Jamie, she was in ministry with me when I, whenever I was in church. So uh, counseling type thing and doing all of that type of stuff, we, we're, we're well equipped for that. You know what I mean? So uh, we don't handle ourselves by, by lashing out at each other. That's just not, that's not the way we move. We, we talk about everything. No need for doing all of that. Okay. Uh, for a man that is, is thinking about recruiting women, Mm -hmm. What advice do you give to that individual? Be honest, man. Be honest and know that it's not about sex. If you're not willing to tap in to that queen and understand her and be willing to cater to her love language, understand her, learn what 
what she needs to hear to, to make her feel confident. Because again, if you go into a relationship where it's just about sex, you're going to fail. Everybody's been through trauma. And if you, if you go into it expecting somebody to be just ready all, already, um, it's going to fail again. Allow people to, to, to grow. Know that you're, you're saying, hey, we're going to be in this thing for the long haul. And I'm going to work with you as long as you are faithful to your commitments with me, as long as, as, long as you don't break the dynamic with me. I'm going to stay with you and we're going to rock this thing out. And that's what it should be about. Don't, don't go outside of that dynamic. If she trusts you, don't ever jeopardize that trust. Seriously. Put that time into those women. And listen, fellas, many of y'all can juggle six, seven women. I get men who call me all the time. Bro, that ain't shit. I got eight women. Okay, fine. Then I'm sure you can handle two. And then, work the, and then earn your way up. Show those two queens that you can be faithful to them, that you can honor those commitments, build, stay focused, and do that shit. Not just want to lay up all the time. And maybe they'll say, let's bring another queen in and be down with that shit. And all, and all it can come together for you, but you can't just walk in there expecting somebody to trust you even when you're doing lying and sneaky shit. Like, be a man about yours, and that queen will do it. Because I've seen men do this. They, they'll bring in two queens and still cheat. And it's because you're trying to satisfy a desire, like your desire to cheat. You think if you, date, if you have more than one woman living with you, then you won't cheat no more. That's not going to quench it. This is the this this happened for me because I'm doing with these queens the same thing that any monogamous man wants to do when he's married and he chooses to lay down his life. Cause I could be single and have all the women I wanted too. I'm like that. I can I can live that life. You know what I mean? So I can live that life, but I, I chose to to live to love the queens I'm with now. So when people say, Well, you just want your cake and eat it too. If I would have wanted that, I could have done it single. You understand? Like you could have and I want to stop you there. If you really wanted that, you didn't have to settle down with two women. You could have just said, listen, I'm getting everything out here. Right. You could have, you could have easily said that. Who disciplines the children? I do. And my, my children are grown, so, so to speak. So we actually sit around, we talk. My, I've never disciplined my children in a way that, was, um, that needed force or anything like that. We've always talked. If my children do something, I want to know why you did it and get to the root of the problem. My children are A, honor roll students, as if they make some good people, but that's what we like to say to prove that they're smart. I challenge my children to outthink education. But when they need to, they'll answer these school questions correctly, and they make straight A's. None of them, I think Israel, Israel, my, my youngest son, he might make a B every now and then. But the other ones, that don't, they don't even make B's, man. They're, they're amazing, okay? Janae, she's already graduated. Um, my son, it, the justice, he's taking lawyers, law, doing lawyer stuff in school, man. He deliberates that they have him going and going to different schools and challenging other children to deliberate their, their, their law. Like, man, he's amazing. He wrestles. Uh, and in Israel, he's an artist, amazing artist, man. So uh, that we all make music together. We all do everything together. OK, um, would you would you I, 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 I'm, I'm just going on going off of what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. These are obviously two black women. Would you bring, if you had a third wife, would you be into bringing a white woman into that mix? Yes or no? What's wrong with you, man? What is wrong with you? All questions that people that are in people's heads. But everything <laughs> about you, and I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it real. You have you the way you have spoken. Have, has taken women that would be saying a lot of stuff, they're not saying a damn thing. Because the way that you're presenting this information is solid, it's truthful, it's real, and it does, it has no base in wanting to be a player, a pimp, a dude who's running around with a bunch of chicks. I got people that, that would be going off right now saying this is respectful. So the, the questions are just because the questions are just because it's things that are that are in people's heads, and um, for for that's what people want to know, basically. I would I would say this: I believe that um, that love shouldn't be put into an avatar in that way. So I don't believe in in color and race at all. I just believe in in people, man. I believe that if we all come together, we could change the world. So I, I would hate. I would never say something like I absolutely would not. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say I would. Because my thing is, I'm with these two queens, and that's it. So it's it. We it's fun to hypothetically talk, but I don't I don't do idle conversation. That's that's my rule. If it's, if I say I wouldn't do it, well, what if you did? What would that be? I don't do idle conversation. I I rather spend my time creating something for real. 
Let me, and, and, and again, let me say this because you, you probably couldn't hear it as as your phone was um you were taking a, a call was coming in. Mm -hmm. This is what's on people's mind. I'm just reading off some of the things that's on people's mind and some of the things I'm thinking as I'm talking. The one thing that I need you to understand, and I don't know if you heard it, sure. the way that you have presented your case, no one can even argue with it because it's, so wow. it's so truthful and it's so real. It don't look like nothing. People that, I would, that, that, that would be coming at you say, oh, this is bullshit. They're not saying one word. Yes, so... Sir. Just asking the questions that they put up on the screen and stuff that's going through my mind. The way that you have presented this, there is no way that someone cannot respect what you're doing. Because it's not coming from a place of sexuality. You can feel that. I can feel that, okay? I can feel that listening to you. This is not coming from a place of, oh, I want three women, so I'm going to do this. Because you just said, I could have been single and did ten women. Absolutely. So, 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 please don't take it like I'm just asking crazy questions. It's just what's on my mind and what people are coming with. Is there any? Uh, 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 let's see here. Uh, let me ask questions. Two queens and two queens. Hold on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, anybody else else asking anything? Because what I'm gonna do right now. I'm going to let you say what you got to say, sir, and then I'm going to just, I'm going to let people go live and say whatever they want to say. Okay, man. God bless them. That's, that's what everybody's saying. It's like, yo, there's so much honesty in what you're saying, no one can argue with it. That's power, brother. No one can argue with it. There's really nothing to argue with because it's, it's coming from a place of true honesty. It's not coming from a place of, yo, man, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just get these women and I'm gonna do my thing. You come, it, it actually, like you said, it, it comes across to me like I'm building a legacy and I have more people to help me build. Absolutely. That's it, brother. And 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 again, learning all the right things. One of the things that when I first met Lacey. She was like, well, I don't be cooking. I said, listen, that's fine. Because what I, here's, what I, here's, here's what I can do. I can teach you how to cook because I can cook. I can burn. And here's the thing. I actually know how to cook. I don't mean make food taste good. I mean cook, cook food that's healthy for you to stimulate your brain, stimulate your mind, and make your body heal itself. That's how we eat in this house. Everybody in this house, man, we get down. We don't play. Every meal is about surviving. We don't eat for taste and all that kind of stuff. You know, we, we feel like, when you consume your, your, sec, your, your sexual and physical desires, that is what creates us to be monsters. So when a man, if a man is looking to satisfy his sexual desire, he's going to act like a monster. Now, I don't mean that he's literally thinking, I'm going to prey on a bunch of women. But he is. Just, just to fulfill his desires, he'll say what he needs to say to get it. Think about it. Because of our taste buds, we'll rob the oceans of its food. And we don't care about the ecosystems that they're in or nothing or the other animals at all just for a taste. Imagine if food didn't have taste. Now, I know the, I know that'd be bland and boring, but you wouldn't eat anything unhealthy. There'd be no need to. There'd be no need to. There'd be no need to, man. That you could you could see instantly how that would make the world a better place, even though it would be so. It just it just would take a lot from life. So we feel like self mastery is controlling those urges. Yes, something tastes good. It don't mean it's good for you. Your taste buds can lie to you. Mm -hmm. Your taste buds can lie to you. Something can sound good. It don't mean that's good for your soul, though. And so we take that time to be self-aware and say, is what I'm putting myself into making me a better person or a worse person? Let's be real. My motto is make being the best version of yourself your new religion. That doesn't mean discredit your old one. But if we, we, we get together and form community to uplift ourselves in our new religion and in our religion now, in every religion, we, we form community to, to uplift our religion, right? And then you pray every day to keep yourself strong in your religion. Or what if you made your next self the best version of yourself, being that next best version of yourself, your new religion? Every single day when you wake up, pray, fine, but then meditate and talk and say to yourself what you're going to do that day and then do that shit. And a good day or bad day is not based on if it's rainy or sunny. A good day or bad day is now based on if you are productive. You don't get to say it's a good or bad day early in the morning or early in the rise, as I call it. You determine if it's a good or a bad day when you lay your head down. Were you productive? That's what you I'm... do something to make your dreams come true because tomorrow never comes in that way. Tomorrow don't come bearing gifts. 
If you don't plant your seed today, tomorrow, you will still have a barren ground. It's a fact. It's a known fact. I agree with that. I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, final question. Uh, somebody asked, are the ladies friendly with each other? Are they kind, you mean? Friendly with each other. Are they, are they cool with each other? Absolutely. They, they're, like, they're like best friends. We, they call themselves sisters, you know what I mean? So when they, when they first agreed uh, to meet each other, um, I didn't want to be there. I wanted to make sure that it was organic for them. So they, I gave them each other's numbers. They arranged a dinner date. And when they got there, it was that feeling of, I, I know this person before, that feeling of, ah, oh, man, it's crazy. I don't know if y'all get into Zodiacs and whatnot, but um, most of their horoscopes or most of their Zodiac, uh, uh, they're, they're the same except for like three, three different things. So they have the same exact um, Zodiac, Rising, and, um, and Moon and all this stuff. So they have a lot in common, you know. But when they met, they just really hit it off, man. And um, they sent me a picture of themselves, and that's when it made my day. I was like, okay. That was it right there. <laughs> there you go. So uh, and people, he's basically summed it up. This is not about two lesbian women getting with a man. This, this is like real legacy building, monogam two monogamous relationships happening simultaneously. And listen, if you, if you came in here late, I highly, I highly advise when I put this up for replay, you go back and watch it because there was a lot to be said today. A lot to be said today. A lot to be said today. And people don't forget, we do this every night. The name of the show, if you're new to the show, is called Sensible Ignorance. That is sense and ignorance. We have sexual relationships. We have news. We have uh, 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 just general nonsense from people. We've got it all. If you haven't followed me, follow me. And every day I put up who we're going to have on the show. Thank you very much for coming through, sir. Is there anything that you'd like to say to the people before you leave? I just say have an open mind family. Uh, cognitive dissonance. Uh, cognitive dissonance. It's that uncomfortable feeling in you and your brain when you see something that you're not used to. Your brain's going to constantly tell you that it's wrong, that it shouldn't be happening, or that you shouldn't hear it. Challenge it. Always be willing to do research. Don't be biased, family. If, you, if you're willing to look outside of your, your realm of knowledge, you will be amazed at how much you can learn and the person that you can be. I always say you're the best version of yourself or the bridge to your future self is knowledge, man. If you want to speed up time for yourself right now, it's not building a damn capsule. It's research and learning. That's how you speed up time for yourself. That's it. I agree, I agree, I agree. A, a, a lot of people are saying next time they want to meet the wise, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that at a later date, brother. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you very much for coming through. I love you. Send me a DM so we can talk and we can build on some other stuff. Indeed, brother. Peace. All right, God bless. God bless. That, that was amazing. Yes, uh, Kevin Wesley, man. Loved it. Loved it. Um, I now want to take it to you. You tell me what you thought about it. So, uh, listen.